All right, Maria mentioned Tropical Storm Isaias. We've gotten questions from Channel 2 viewers today on two places in particular, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on the left, and then the Outer Banks of North Carolina on the right. Both are, of course, popular vacation destinations for Western New Yorkers. They are. So let's start with the Outer Banks. There was a 75 mile an hour wind gust reported at Jeanette's Pier in Nags Head, North Carolina. Luckily, though, just minimal damage along the Outer Banks. The news website The Outer Banks Voice reported only minor flooding and some downed trees, leading to scattered power outages. Now, teams finished assessing the damage on Hatteras Island, and at 2 o'clock this afternoon, they lifted all restrictions to residents and visitors. Swimming, however, is still prohibited in that area, though. The damage is a bit worse to the south of there in the Myrtle Beach area. By now, you've probably seen this incredible video. Kind of sad. Part of the Sea Captain Pier in Cherry Grove in North Myrtle Beach just washed away. I've been on that pier many times. Just so much debris in the water that they've had to prohibit any swimming there. Overnight, teams performed several high water rescues in Cherry Grove, especially. Much of that community was under four feet of water during high tide. The Family Kingdom Amusement Park that so many of you have visited over the years also suffered some flood damage as well as businesses, as you can see in that video. The waters have now receded, but crews are keeping an eye on the Waccamaw River, which could reach moderate flood stage tomorrow or Thursday. And one bit of good news, though, the storm moved through the mid-Atlantic states pretty quickly and then up into the northeast. Yeah, earlier today it passed through New York City. You can see just some kind of pretty clouds, not a bad looking skyline shot there of New York City right now. This is a live shot, um, but this ended up being a very dangerous storm there. At least one person was killed in the Big Apple today when a tree mm -hmm. fell onto a parked van in Queens. A man in his 60s died in that incident. At last check, as many as 2 million homes and businesses are still without power in the New York City metro area. So even though this was just a category one storm when it hit right and then mm -hmm. it quickly became a tropical storm um, still doing a lot of damage. Yeah, it, it can happen really, really quickly. I mean, when we had those really high winds on Sunday night, I mean, there wasn't anything really devastating around here. Thank goodness. But yeah, yeah when Mother Nature gets kicked up, man, she can make quite a mess of things before she moves on. No doubt. And good news for the people asking us about the Outer Banks and Myrtle Beach for the most part. Right. Not a ton of damage. Yeah. All right. Finally, today over the past several months, we have talked about masks until we're well blue in the face pretty much. <laughs> Just look around and you are guaranteed to see people not wearing them properly. We also still get a lot of questions about different types of masks, how to fit them to your face. And lately, people asking us about acne caused by the coverings. Sure. So tonight, Mask Hygiene 101 from reporter Janelle Bluda. Let's all agree they're not something any of us want to wear, but doctors say masks they're important. Perhaps one of our uh, top tools to avoid COVID-19. But you should know. It's very easy to cross-contaminate your mask and actually make it a bit more dangerous than it should be. Dr. Luis Ostrowski says you should never bend or fold your mask where one side can touch the other. On the inside, your own respiratory droplets are going to be sort of carrying bacteria, yeast, other uh, microorganisms. On the outside, they're going to do their job and they're going to catch those droplets from other people. Some bacteria can stay on the mask, so he says you should wash it or throw it away daily. If not, it's just going to be sort of an unpleasant thing. You could probably get acne, which dermatologists say they're seeing a lot. Three to five patients a day. It's significant. It's happening quite a bit. Dr. Peterson with the Pearl Dermatology says it's called acne mechanica or maskne. It's a combination of heat, friction, oil, sebum, um, bacteria, and then also some of the skincare products such as makeup. So everything just kind of in combination. It's seen most in those who wear a mask for most of the day, but there are things that can help. Before you put your mask on, make sure you start with a nice clean face. First and foremost, wash your face, avoid makeup and use a non acne causing lotion. Once it's off, wash your face again and then go wash your mask. To do so, the CDC says you should use hot water and regular detergent. Once in the dryer, use the highest heat setting and leave it in there until the mask is completely dry. I'm Janelle Bluda.
I just got my brand new mask, Mary Alice, raising money for a local charity, yes. and I left it on my desk, and now I can't reach it, but it's got, <laughs> it's green with little white buffaloes right. all over it. So, you know what? You can get creative with your masks. I love that one. I know. That's kind of been part of the fun. I see a lot of folks wearing little animal snouts on their masks, no which doubt. is really adorable. So, yeah, you got to have fun oh. with it. Amy's running in to grab my mask, but I think we're out of time. Oh, I'll show maybe. it to you tomorrow. Okay, very good. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for watching. Remember, keep texting us your questions and your comments. The number is 849-2200.